Well, I'm a few days behind, but nonetheless, it's here. Uh, it's time for the weekly OTR Central Q&As. I'm going to do it like I usually do, one for the Facebook questions, which is this video, and then coming up soon will be one for the Twitter questions. So if you ask your questions via Twitter, your questions might be getting answered soon. As far as Facebook, since there's such a response to the Facebook ones, I try to get through as many of the good ones as I can. I don't like pre-sort it or anything because it would take too long. So if you asked them and it just didn't get answered, I'm sorry, but that's just kind of the way it goes. So let me go ahead and get started. David Henry asks, how is it that God runs NXT, which caters to us hardcore fans, but can go on Raw and mock and belittle us? Because that's something that I think in part Vince will put him up to on the main show, and he doesn't really care about NXT. I think it's also a realization for Triple H that he knows that NXT, he's not under any delusions. There's not a lot of mainstream people watching it. That is primarily the hardcore loyal wrestling fans. So you have to cater your product to them. And you also have to understand that that is primarily the audience that is subscribing to your WWE network. So it just is what it is. It's typical WWE because, in fact, they don't really, as I've talked about recently, they don't have an identity with their product. So they're really all types of torn and conflicted on the who the hell to appeal to. Because they need one segment, but then they need the other segment. They try to appeal to one. They don't appeal to the other. Then they try to compensate, and they end up appealing to absolutely nobody. Uh, Brian Ewell, how bad would it be if they had Cena win the title at SummerSlam for him to get to 16 just to have Sheamus cash in and have a Sheamus Cena title feud? Oh, God. Oh, God. Shoot me. Shoot me now. Just the most boring hero WWE's ever had versus one of the most boring villains WWE has ever had. That doesn't get you pessimistic about how boring it would fucking be. I don't know what would. Uh, Dylan Haggett, would you have been happy if Bobby Lashley beat John Cena for the WWE title in 2007? Yes. Uh, at that particular time, did I necessarily think Bobby Lashley was world title worthy? No, not particularly. Uh, but would I would have been happy? Yes, I would have. Uh, Trevor Clark, between Hogan, Austin, Rock, and Cena, who would you have had end Undertaker's streak? Um, I never would have done it with Hogan. Nah. Uh, Rock, I don't think so. Probably would have had to be Austin because fans in the late 90s were so caught up in the Austin bullshit. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I really don't. You know, Austin was so big and he was so popular. And it's like you could do very little wrong with him except for, you know, WrestleMania 17. Um, but in all seriousness, I think it would have worked the best if you did Austin. If you had Cena end the streak, the only way it could work, but it could work brilliantly, is if you would turn him heel afterwards. Because the heat the guy already gets would be magnified so many more times over, but having him end it to be the exact same person that he's been for 10 years makes absolutely no fucking sense and would be pointless and frankly counterproductive for all parties involved. Uh, let's see here. Timothy Place. I've only watched a few videos and it seems like you're not happy with WWE's product. Good call! Why don't you do a review of Lucha Underground Ultimate Lucha this week? Um... You know, maybe if I got the El Rey Network, I would watch more Lucha Underground. I might even try watching Lucha Underground. I've caught bits and pieces. I just, I guess in general, I'm just not pleased enough with the direction of uh, American Pro Wrestling to give a fuck. However, with that said, if I was likely at this point in time, all things being equal, to check out one wrestling show... It probably would be Lucha Underground because I appreciate the fact that they try to make it feel like not just a wrestling show, not a sports entertainment show, but a TV show. It has an entirely different fresh feeling to it for who they are and what they're trying to appeal to and what they're trying to do. I love what they do. I like the presentation. It feels so fresh. It's so different and so good. So yeah, if you all things being equal, it was WWE, it was TNA, it was ROH, it was Lucha Underground, New Japan, they were all available to me on a network of some kind, same time frame, uh, same time slots, NXT, you know, throw all of them in there. I'd probably side with Lucha Underground because of the freshness of the presentation. Uh, let's see here. Chris Watson, would you consider Piper one of the better promo guys in wrestling? Uh, there is a very short list at the very top of those guys of all time, and Piper is clearly on that list. Is he the greatest talker? You know, that's a bit subjective in terms of your personal opinions, uh, but he's most certainly top five. I don't see how you could put together five best talkers of all time and not have Piper on that list. I mean, you might not have him number one because you prefer this guy or this style or what have you, but 
I mean, for him not to be on the top five, you really need to question what the hell you've got going on in your list, and you have to question whether or not you know anything about professional fucking wrestling at all. Uh, Mark Whalen, if you had to pick just one, what would you be your favorite Roddy Roddy Piper match of all time? Um, you know, WrestleMania won because of what that meant to the business and the fact that he main evented the first ever WrestleMania in Madison Square Garden. Uh, but in terms of a pure match standpoint, I enjoyed WrestleMania 3 when he beat Adrian Adonis in that retirement match. But I really, really liked that match with him and Bret Hart at WrestleMania 8. I love the dynamics of uh, the business between the two of them heading into WrestleMania. I thought Piper's interview with Hart backstage at WrestleMania 8 was classic Piper. You know, it was only one piece of baloney, but I didn't care. I was hungry. <laughs> it's fucking awesome, Piper. Uh, so that match would be on there. But really, in terms of pure favorite, it's got to be the Hollywood Backlot Brawl against Gold Dust at WrestleMania 12. To me, that's that match. It's fucking incredible. Kyle Bridges, what do you think the reaction would have been if Batista and Orton main evented WrestleMania 30 right after Taker lost? <laughs> oh, people would have been cussing. They would have been fussing. They would have been pissing. They would have been moaning. They would have been bitching. They would have been complaining. They would have been tuning in the next night to watch Raw. Uh, Benedict Infinity War, do you have a favorite UFC fight? No, I do not. Mm-mm. John Witcher, do you feel that ending the streak has complicated the finish for a Sting versus Taker match at 32 if they decide to do it? Perhaps. Because if you don't give Sting a victory over somebody at some point, why bring Sting in just to have him lose to Triple H and then lose to Taker the next year? At the same point in time, why have Taker just lose to Lesnar at 30 to beat Wyatt at 31, then maybe come back and potentially beat Lesnar at SummerSlam 2015, and then potentially beat a Sting at WrestleMania 32. Yeah, it is problematic, and, that, and that's one reason why. Uh, Jeff Kyles, can you see Sheamus winning the WWE Championship and Daniel Bryan winning at the Rumble and having Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania? This match is going to really count 33 seconds. You know to that question right now, gold standard 000 sitting there going, yeah, Seamus, Daniel Bryan, well, that's what the people want. Trademark's going, fuck you! That's shit! And it is shit. No, I can't see it. They most certainly wouldn't put Daniel Bryan in that spot where he'd be sniffing that title ever again. The Rusty Gillespie, do you think the Undertaker and Brock Lesnar match is just a way to set up Sting versus Taker? Who the fuck knows? It could be. But then again, you're going into really weird territory if you have Sting get involved and cost Taker the match. People don't want to boo Sting. That wouldn't be a cool thing to do. It's just it's really odd. It'd be really weird. And it would be a very unfulfilling, unsatisfying finish to SummerSlam if they did that. Uh, Shay Delane, would WrestleMania have worked as well had Piper not been the one feuding with Hogan? No. Because I talked about my Roddy Piper tribute video. I thought the feud that really actually carried WrestleMania 1 was Piper Mr. T, not Piper Hogan. So no, they had to have Piper. They had to have Piper. Piper was just as important as anybody else. Um, Michael Bork, will Goldberg return to WWE to have a match with Brock Lesnar? Shut up. Hopefully never. Just give me a match against Ryback. What the hell? I, I wouldn't mind seeing that. Why not? Uh, Dave Arigo, could Kevin Owens have made it to the WWE in the Hogan Attitude or Ruthless Aggression era? I think he could have made it in all three eras. I really do. I think he could have made it in the Hogan era. I most certainly think he could have made it in the Attitude era, and I think he would have had a place in the Ruthless Aggression era, especially with Heyman booking him on SmackDown. So, yeah, I think he could have. Uh, John Gorman, do you have any thoughts on Dana White calling wrestling fake and any thoughts on other wrestlers commenting towards Dana White about it? I did a video talking about Dana White calling wrestling fake and basically saying it was fake-ass shit and that's why we should be paying $9.99 for the shows. His shit's so real. Fuck off. Um, and then about the wrestlers getting all butthurt about it even though they're fucking marks for UFC. So I've done a video. You can check it out on this channel if you want my thoughts. Andrew Mancuso, if John Cena and Randy Orton never made it to the WWE, then... Who do you think would have been the face of WWE? I think the whole plan all along was for Brock Lesnar to be the face of the decade, face of the company for a decade. If Lesnar never left, Cena might have never become the face of the company. Nick Perkins, do you think Roddy Piper should have won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship during the dark days of WCW? 
Uh, it depends on what you define as a dark days. There was more than one set of dark days for WCW if you're talking about towards the tail end. Eh, I don't know. I don't really know. Brian Simons. Who is the best performers ranked one through four out of these recently lost legends? Piper, Dusty, Macho Man, Warrior. Hmm. Best performers. I really don't even want to do this one because I feel like I'm besmirching them if they do. I'll go 4 3 2 1. I'll go Warrior 4, Piper 3, Dusty 2, Macho Man 1. There you go. That's the best way I could put it. Sean Anderson, are WWE seriously going to have Sheamus as the top heel after he cashes in? Exactly. Seriously. Now, I've dropped craps that have more heat than Sheamus does right now. Imagine how fucking boring that would be with him as the world champion. Oh. Oh, God. Jacob Castle, who does Cena face at WrestleMania 32 and what is on the line? Uh, you really have to wonder if it's going to be the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So I highly doubt they're going to go into that WrestleMania 32 show. Sting's going to be doing something big, perhaps with Taker, who's going to be doing something big, you know. That's a possibility. Lesnar may be doing something big, perhaps with Stone Cold Steve Austin, who you imagine if he's going to be uninvolved in the show, he's going to be involved in something big. Rock and Triple H are either going to be doing a solo thing or a tag match. Uh, you know, they're going to have, like, Stephanie McMahon, Ronda Rousey involved in some way, singles match or tag match, what have you. Um, so I leave Cena in an odd place with no one to really work with. Uh... They want to put him in a big spot because they will. WWE is going to want to point to the fact, you know, he was the guy that helped us draw 110,000 people at AT&T Stadium. Uh, so, I mean, there's a chance that they would go with Roman Reigns, and I, I do think that would work. Although that would require Reigns winning the Rumble for a second straight year. You know, I would actually. You know, well, even though he's hurt, of course, again, it'd be fucking Ryback. I think that would work even better if he faced off with Cena at 32. Um, who the fuck knows at this point? Um, I have no clue, really. That's a shame. Samuel Henderson, uh, who do you think is the most underrated wrestler of all time? Personally, I think it's Scott Steiner. I think he's the most underrated English and math teacher of all time. Uh, I don't know if I have a most underrated of all time. I don't know if I have the energy to think about them now. James White, since the feud with Kevin Owens and John Cena is finished, is there anything the WWE can do to keep Owens relevant? Yes. Uh, continue to feature him like he matters and not just have him lose and have him job out all the time. Quite simple. Michael Bohr, do you think WWE will ever host a WrestleMania in the UK? I think at some point in time it is coming. You know, I think that's why they did a bit of a test run with that Beast Beast in the East show on July 4th. I know the time zones are much, much different. Uh, but I think there's a there's a reason that they did it. So there could be a thought process of doing it at some point. I think they should. I think they need to. Edsel Laurel, if Batista returns before WrestleMania 32, is a Brock Lesnar versus Batista match still a money match at WrestleMania? I think it has potential to be so. I think he could do it because in that case, Batista could be what he's more natural as, as a heel. He could be a jerk. He could be a dick. The fans could get really behind Brock Lesnar like they want to do at this point in time. I do think the dynamics of it potentially work and work very, very well. James Fields. Uh, were you ever a fan of the Wrestling Roundtable and your thoughts on Owen Hart and Yoko Zuna as tag champs? I loved Owen Hart and Yoko as tag champs. And yeah, I would occasionally check out Wrestling Roundtable. What the hell ever happened to them? I don't really know. Um, I, I, I used to watch them every once in a while, sure. Uh, Robert Wyatt, who do you think are the most underappreciated wrestlers by modern fans? Honky Tonk, Andre, Sheik, etc. Um... Younger fans that really weren't around, in a lot of ways, underappreciate all of those guys. Because I don't think they can tangibly understand how big Hogan was, how big Savage was, how big an IC champion like Honky Tonk Man was, how big Andre was, uh, the Iron Sheik, and you know, so on and so forth. So a lot of them might be underappreciated because you don't have that context of actually living that reality at the time. You can go based off of history and try to have an appreciation, but it might not be a full-on understanding, if that makes sense. Michael Cohen, when would have been the perfect time for Jake the Snake Roberts to win the WWF title? I don't know if you ever needed to have him win the title. Uh, maybe in 90 when Warrior was the champ, that could have been an opportunity, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, let's see here. James Olsen. Um, name all the women divas whose Kiss My Ass Club you would gladly join through the different eras of WWE, WWF. Stop giving me these questions where I have to 
think and slow down and all this other crap. I want to be able to fire through as many of these questions as possible. Trish Stratus, obviously. Oh, yeah. Uh, Naomi. Yeah, I do. Alicia Fox. Why not? And there are others, too. Layla. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there, are, there, there are more, but those will be just a few to start off with. Uh, let's see here. Will A. Richardson, if you had control of WWE writing, what would be your next world title program after SummerSlam is over? <sighs> world title program? I don't know. I really don't. As Rollins as the champ is lame. Cena as the champ is even lamer. And I don't know if there are any real appealing options at this point. It's how bad of a corner they booked themselves in. Braden Crocker, should WWE bring in a Divas Tag Team Championship? Fucking hell no. They can't even properly book the Divas they already have. They can't even properly book the belt that they already have. Why the hell would we want to add another belt to the mix? This is like WCW having a Cruiserweight Tag Team title. Holy Christ. Uh, David Rook, how would you improve WWE's tag team division? Simple. Not just have them always appear for fucking wrestling matches. Give them promos. Give them segments. Do skits with them. Do comedy stuff. Do all types of different things other than just having them wrestle each other and wrestle matches in general. Uh, Brian Walmer, do you think TNA ruined the GFW invasion more than WWE ruined the WCW invasion? And which one is was worse? Okay, let's be perfectly realistic here in the grand scheme of things. Does that GFW TNA invasion matter any fuck all whatsoever? No. There's really no history there. Most people don't give a shit about that. You're talking about WWF versus WCW. We have been looking for this shit for years and years. And then come 2001, we finally get it. And that's what we fucking get. I mean, I can't even believe, Brian, you've watched this channel a long time. I can't believe you would ask this question. You know the answer. You know the answer. Because what the hell possibilities or potential was there for GFW and TNA Invasion? Does GFW even have a fucking television deal? Like, you're filming TV tapings. Do they even have a television deal? Do they? This was WCW, WWF. And that's what the fuck they did. Uh, Javon Mallet, do you like the direction Cesaro is going in right now in WWE? And uh, would a loss to Owens at SummerSlam ruin his momentum? Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Cesaro Owens, in a way, is kind of a lose lose situation, too, because Owens beats Cesaro, who really doesn't beat that many people. You know, what does that really mean for Owens? Cesaro beats Owens. This is the dumb shit they do. There's no progression of characters. There's no mapping out of things and planning. We're going from A to B to C to D to E to F back to G to H, so on and so forth. So, yeah, I, as far as Cesaro, I mean, it's nice that they're trying to feature him a little serious, but, you know, they got a long ways to go. Michael Corvin, seeing as how Paul Heyman has had a lot of success with really only one person in WWE, that being Brock Lesnar, is it safe to say that Paul Heyman is a one-hit wonder in WWE from a wrestling manager standpoint? Thank you. Oh. I can't believe that you didn't sit there and say CM Punk was a great success. You idiot. Oh, God. Oh, Heyman's a one-trick pony when it comes to a manager, and we don't fucking know it. Uh... Dean Carroll, your thoughts on a future Sheamus and Kevin Owens feud? No, thank you. I'm good. Uh, Jonathan Pittman, who would be WWE's top guy if John Cena had to retire tomorrow? They don't fucking know. Frankly, at that point in time, I'd almost believe that Triple H would have to go back to being a full-time guy for a year or two, and he would be the default top guy until they got two guys ready. I really believe that. Um, Mark Johnson, marvelous Mark. In your opinion, the best wrestler to never be world champion? Hmm. Hmm. Depends on what you define as best wrestler. And there were a lot of guys in the WWF in the 80s, you know, namely, you know, 
Piper, Jake the Snake, Mr. Perfect. Uh, people point to guys like Scott Hall as well. Uh, technically, Andre. Um, you know, Andre was always that big group traction. I guess he wasn't the best wrestler from a work rate standpoint. Like, that fucking matters. But at the end of the day, to me, he's easily the biggest star that has never been WWE or world champion of any note. So that would probably have to be the guy. Uh, so thanks to you guys that took your time to post your questions for this Facebook Q&A. Much appreciated, much obliged. Make sure you tune in for the Twitter Q&A so that way you can get your Twitter questions answered. I'll be doing another Q&A this weekend, so stay tuned. Make sure you check out the other videos on this channel, damn it.